A century from Jason Roy secured a semi-final place for Surrey despite a brilliant 100 off just 72 balls from Matt Coles as they beat Kent by 17 runs on Dockworth Lewis. The home side won the toss and chose to bat and in Jason Roy and Stephen Davies, they have two of the most informed batters in the Royal London Cup. Davies had already hit 200s this season but it was Roy who decided it was going to be his day. When he hits a ball, it stays hit, and he was showing just why he's been selected again for the ODI and T20 squad to take on Australia. The pair had taken the score past the 50 mark in the ninth over, but the 10th saw the first wicket. Darren Stevens forcing Davies to nick off with Sam Billings standing up. The left-hander went for 17, but that brought in another left-hander in the form of Kumar Sangakkara. The Sri Lankan joined Roy, but rather than seeing the fireworks these two batsmen are capable of, they were kept down to a reasonable rate thanks to some tight bowling from the Kent attack. These fours the exception rather than the rule. Surrey were building a platform for the later overs, and in doing so, Roy found himself at his 50 in the 17th over. He'd faced 60 balls and had hit eight fours. The pair had taken the home side to 95 by the 20th over when Sangakkara fell to James Treadwell for 15. Stevens taking a smart catch in the slips after a bit of turn and bounce that would have got the Surrey spinners interested. Rory Burns now joined Roy at the crease and with 30 overs to go and 8 wickets left in the hutch, Surrey were looking at a big total on a pitch that had something in it for both bat and ball. Having taken Surrey past the 150 mark in the 30th over, Roy was soon at his own personal landmark when he pulled Matt Hunt through mid-wicket for 4. He'd taken 109 balls to get there, struck 13 fours, and was responsible for more than half his side's runs. He celebrated reaching his second list day 100 of the season by smacking his and Surrey's first maximum off Fabian Cowdery. And by the end of the 34th over, Surrey were looking comfortable on 188 for two with 16 overs left. Kent were in desperate need of wickets, and that's just what they got as Roy's brilliant innings came to an end when he tried to go big off Treadwell and found Alex Blake in the deep. Roy was out for 112 but had taken his side's total to 192 and in doing so had taken his runs in the competition this season to 400. Rory Burns had got to 42 but in the next over was on his way when Matt Coles bowled him around his legs. Ben Folkes came and went for four in the following over when he lobbed a cap to Sam Northeast at mid-wicket. Surrey had lost three wickets and three overs for just 11 runs. Some tight bowling from the visitors in the next seven overs led to James Burke slicing Claydon to Fabian Cowdery at point in the hunt for runs. Surrey now found themselves on 242 for six with four overs to go. Tom Curran showed he's more than useful with a bat by planting Claydon straight back over his head for a maximum. But when he tried to repeat the shot off Matt Coles, he could only find Cowdery at long off to go for 15. Roy's innings was proving more and more important as Zafar Ansari followed the next ball. Coles finished with figures of 3 for 42 from his 10 overs. Ansari departed having made 35 but with only one boundary in his innings. Claydon started the final over with Surrey on 266 and in pursuit of getting as many runs as possible on the board, Gareth Batty nicked off for one. And with one ball remaining, Claydon wrapped up the innings when he had Sam Curran caught by Hun to finish with figures of 3 for 28. Surrey had batted their way to 273 of their 50 overs, a competitive total on a worn pitch that helped both batsmen and the bowler. Kent were in need of a good start, but they lost Daniel Bell Drummond in the second over when he found Sangakkara off Sam Curran to go for one. Joe Denley followed in the eighth over when he was caught by Burns to give Curran his second wicket and leave the visitors on 22 for two. The players were forced off due to rain for an hour and 20 minutes and when they came back on their target had been revised to 251 off 40 overs with each bowler only allowed eight overs. The break didn't change the flow of the game however as first Cowdery was bowled by Tom Curran and two overs later, Northeast followed suit when the older of the two brothers picked up his second wicket to leave the Spitfires on four for 49, needing 202 from the remaining 27 overs. It got worse for the visitors as the very next over, Billings was stumped by folks off Ansari. Kent was staring at defeat with five batsmen back in the hutch and a required run rate approaching eight runs. 
Blake and Stevens stem the tide for a few overs, taking the score past 50 and on to 73, with the latter planting Ansari over the ropes for the Spitfire's first maximum. But Ansari exacted his revenge when Blake found Roy at mid-wicket to leave the visitors with the daunting task of 172 off 22 overs, with only four batsmen to come. As long as Stevens stayed in, however, Kent had a chance. He struck Ansari over the rope in the 20th over to help the situation. But at the start of the next over, Treadwell was caught behind by Folks off Batty, and the visitors now found themselves on 101 for 7. Cole strode to the crease to join Stevens, and the pair worked the ball around and picked up boundaries where they could to take Kent up to 140 by the end of the 27th over. The start of the 28th over saw Stevens caught by Folks off Burke, and if Kent were to make a match of this, they needed something special. And something special they got. Coles, with two wickets remaining and 111 to get, decided he was going to have a go. He struck Burke over the ropes for his first maximum, and what followed was quite simply breathtaking. Having started his innings fairly circumspectly, Coles went on the rampage. He mixed some sumptuous timing with brute force, and the 5,000-strong crowd at the Kia Oval were being peppered in nearly every over that followed. Coles had reduced the target to 82 off 60 balls when he lost Claydon, the number 10 bowl by Jake Birnbach for four. Coles at this point was on 42 of 31 balls. The next eight overs saw Coles face all but five balls as he milked the strike expertly on his way to one of the best innings the competition has seen. He decided that if it didn't go for a boundary, he wouldn't run unless it was the last ball of the over. This strategy saw him pass 50 in the 32nd over with a six off Jake Dernback. The next Dernback over went for two more maximums and by the end of the 24th, Kent needed 49 runs off 26 balls. Burke felt the full force of Coles in the 36th over with another huge six that nearly went out the ground. Batty tried to take the pace off the ball by bringing himself on, but that decision backfired as Coles hit him for back-to-back -back sixes and followed that up with a four to take 17 runs off the 37th over and take the left-hander to 99. Coles got the single he needed off Curran and was raising his bat in celebration of his maiden 100 in List A cricket. It was an astonishing display of hitting that saw him strike nine sixes and six fours in a 71-ball 100. It also meant Kent needed just 19 runs from 17 balls. Hun got a single to bring Coles back on strike, but in trying to get his side over the line for what would have been one of the most remarkable run chases the game has ever seen, Coles finally missed hit one, and his incredible innings was brought to an end by Folks off the bowling of Tom Curran, who finished with figures of 3 for 22. The partnership ended on 46, with Hun contributing just one run and the reaction shown to Coles by the Surrey players showed just how good Coles' efforts were. In the end, though, they weren't enough as Surrey won by 17 runs on the Tuckworth-Lewis method. It means Kent's run in this year's Royal London Cup came to an end, while Surrey continue into the semi-finals with a game against Nottingham to come on Monday the 7th of September.